What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to Dorian.slash. This is Rocky Linux 8.3 Release Candidate 1. I've installed this on hardware, as you can see, and I'll be going over the installation process as well as how it runs. And I'm also going to go over the migration tool that they've created to convert your existing CentOS installation over to Rocky. But first, why does it exist? Why did they create it? I've had the pleasure over the past week and a bit to talk with Greg Kurtzer, who's the founder of Rocky Linux and also the co-founder of CentOS. If you follow Linux news or you're a CentOS user, you're probably very much aware that Red Hat is dropping CentOS. So let's have a quick look at how it works here. So CentOS is the community enterprise operating system, hence the name CentOS. I know there's a lot of theories about what happened and everything, so anything I'm saying here is basically my opinion and my thoughts. But in the grand scheme of things, this is where CentOS fit in before. You have Fedora, which is a community-based distro sponsored by Red Hat, and then you have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL. And further down the stream is CentOS. And this order is how the packages flow. So Fedora will always have the newer packages because those packages, once they're deemed stable and usable, they will flow downstream to RHEL. And this is important for Red Hat because this means ultimate stability based on performance in Fedora. Because as a paid Linux distribution and enterprise operating system, you want to have maximum stability for your customers. CentOS was rebuilt based off of Red Hat. So packages basically flow from Fedora to RHEL to CentOS. This means for stability, CentOS was ultimately super stable because it was based on these other upstream distributions. So any issues or problems were usually identified first by either Fedora or RHEL, and this left CentOS super stable. Older packages, but all the bug fixes and security fixes were there. And it's just the ultimate operating system for a super stable community-based operating system. Back in 2014, CentOS was struggling with resources and funding, so Red Hat essentially bought them. This meant the new board was controlled by Red Hat and the entire project became Red Hat property, essentially. Then Red Hat created CentOS Stream. And some people called this a rolling release of CentOS, but it's not. It's just upstream from Red Hat. So the packages come from Fedora, make their way down through CentOS Stream, then RHEL, and then CentOS. But then Red Hat went and made the decision to kill off CentOS. And because they owned it, it was their project. They had the ability to do so. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, this is because they wanted to force people to switch to RHEL, a paid platform and gain more customers. And this is entirely possible. This is one of those theories. Of course, Red Hat denies this, and they're saying that they've shifted their focus to CentOS Stream in order to make it a more newer distro with newer packages. But when you look at how packages flow now, you see that if you're using CentOS Stream, it's now less stable than RHEL because the packages go through CentOS first and then into RHEL. And this basically took away the ability for all the CentOS users to have a reliable distro based on a reliable enterprise Linux distro. Obviously, this was a big blow to all CentOS users, as well as Greg Kurtzer, who co-founded CentOS 16 years ago. And this is where Rocky Linux comes in. It's a new community-based distro rebuilt off of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And the name Rocky is a tribute to Rocky McGow, who is the late co-founder of CentOS. This once again creates a distribution which is downstream from Fedora, CentOS Stream, RHEL, and back to Rocky, essentially putting a distribution back in place where CentOS once existed. So the installation itself went really smooth. I popped in my USB, it booted up and installed just fine. The Anaconda installer is pretty standard for Fedora-based products. And if you've installed CentOS before, then this will all look very familiar because it's the same installation process. I was a little worried because my hardware is a little newer and it uses kernel 4.18, but it's a newer version of kernel 4.18 and it worked just fine with my hardware. So when setting up, you can click on software selection and then based on the base environment you select, you can choose basic web server or whatever tools you want to have on your system, or you can choose just regular workstation if that's what you want to use. And if you're just running a straight server, then you can just select server and not install a GUI at all. The rest of the installation was very standard. I didn't get any errors. And once I was done, I rebooted into Rocky and there was no issues. 
when you're logging in, you have the usual standard and classic desktop environments, as well as the ability to choose either Wayland or X11. If you've ever installed CentOS before, this will look very familiar because you're basically getting all the same things that you would with CentOS. Both CentOS and Rocky are built off of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And with stability being the name of the game, stability means older packages that are tried, tested, and true. So you'll get something like LibreOffice 6.3, which is a bit older, but still works. There's options to get around that though. As you can see here, if we look at the kernel version, it's 4.18. 0.240.22, which was released April 12th of this year. So it's still fairly recent. It's just an older version. This means any major bug fixes or security patches are already applied. RAM usage is pretty typical for a GNOME desktop environment, but if you're just running it as a server without a GUI, it'll of course be a lot less. So when I talked about getting newer versions of packages, this is very similar to the video that I just put out on flat packs. You can head on over to Flat Hub, go to Quick Setup, and choose CentOS, and then just install the Flat Hub repository file. Being a very close clone to CentOS, it's not a direct clone, but the way it is built from RHEL just like CentOS is, it's sort of like a clone. So then after installing that repository file, you can just open the Software Center, and you'll see Flatpak applications right in the Software Center, like the ungoogled Chromium, VS Code, LibreOffice 7, and even things like Spotify. So as I said, it's essentially as close to a clone as you can get for CentOS. You can see here it's actually Rocky Linux, but everything else in the underlying system is the same. So if I want to do something in Rocky, I can just look up how do I do this in CentOS, follow the same steps, and it'll work. In this case here, I'm installing NeoFetch using instructions for CentOS. And just in case you didn't notice earlier, just like CentOS, it's using GNOME version 3.32.2, a little bit older, but again, it's all about stability. And another great thing about Rocky being built off of RHEL is that you can go to the RHEL website and look at their security bulletins, their product advisories, and the list of CVEs, and these will all apply to Rocky just like they would in CentOS. So this means if you're looking for any security updates, all you have to do is look at these and they apply to your system and you're using a free community-based enterprise Linux distro. Now, if you want to try it, you can just head over to rockylinux.org. I'll put a link in the description below and you can click on download here. But remember, this is a release candidate and they warn you right here, it should not be used in production. But if you're a CentOS user and you're really concerned about what you're going to do with your server, then this is a really good solution. It's the same founder as CentOS. They've already received some sponsors and some donations. So they've secured their funding and they're able to kick off this project and they're no longer under the control of Red Hat. It's really unfortunate what happened to CentOS, but it is what it is. It was a, a business decision by Red Hat but I'm happy to see that they were able to go ahead and recreate what CentOS once was. And I think with the last seven years or so since Red Hat bought them, they've gained a lot of traction, got a lot more support because they've really skyrocketed in their development team and people wanted to help and contribute. They went from zero to 60 in no time. So I think they have a lot more backing this time from the community than they did before. And this is going to put Rocky back in the hands and in the control of the community as opposed to under a corporation. There is a migration script to convert your existing CentOS distro to Rocky Linux in place and keep all your configurations intact. It's not quite ready yet. We're waiting for all the mirrors to come up and everything, but I'm ready to test it out. I've got CentOS 8 installed here and I have a basic web server up and running. This one here is a virtual machine, but if I go ahead and use my host, you can see it's still working. So this will be just a, a simple test of the migration, convert it over to Rocky Linux, make sure the website's still working. It's pretty simple test, but it's just to demo that it actually works. Once it's up and running, and at least in the testing phase, I'll do a demo of it once it's working, and I'll post a video on the migration process. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that video when it comes out. And until then, like I said, you can try it out if you want to, but just be aware it's not ready for production. If you're just running a test server, then go ahead and try it out. Why not?
And if you want to help contribute to the project, head on over to rockylinux.org and become part of their team. I know Greg is very excited for this, as well as all the other CentOS users and the other contributors to Rocky. I think this is fantastic that they were able to do this and take the power back. And I think based on what happened last time, I think this is a project that's definitely going to stay in the hands of the community this time. So don't forget to stay tuned for the update by subscribing. Don't forget to click like. And congratulations to Greg Kurtzer and the rest of the Rocky Linux team for making this happen. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, bash on.